In this video, we will briefly go over iLearn's interface and get familiar where commonly used items and features are located. To navigate to iLearn, open a web browser and go to https colon slash slash iLearn.sfsu.edu. To log in, select the click to log in button and log in with your SF State credentials. When you log in to iLearn, you arrive at iLearn's front page. This page gives you a quick overview of general information about iLearn, as well as important announcements from the campus. On the left are a list of courses and collaborative sites you have access to. The My Courses block will display any of the classes you are teaching or are enrolled in for the current semester. To view classes in other semesters, select Show All My Courses. Semesters are listed at the top as tabs. If you are looking for a future semester, select Upcoming Semesters. For older courses, select Archive. Click on the title of a course to enter the course page. An iLearn course page is divided up into three main sections. From left to right, these are the drawer, the content area, and blocks. By default, the drawer is collapsed. Selecting the Expand icon in the upper left corner by the iLearn logo will expand the drawer. The drawer provides quick navigation through an iLearn course. At the top, there is a link to the Participants page, which lists everyone enrolled in the course. The next link is labeled Grades and takes you to the course gradebook. Further down are quick links to the sections in the course. Below that, are links to Mediasite, the campus lecture capture system. The center of the page is where all content goes. By default, every iLearn course has 17 sections, representative of a typical semester which has 17 weeks. A common way of organizing the class is by week. On the right-hand side are blocks, or quick access to features that do not really fit anywhere else. From top to bottom, the default blocks include the iLearn Help block, which provides quick links to support documentation and contact for the iLearn support team, and Quick Mail, which allows instructors to send an email to course participants. Finally, and most importantly, the right-hand column contains the gear wheel menu, which lets instructors control the settings in a course. To turn editing on, select the gear wheel on the right and choose Turn Editing On. When editing is turned on, a variety of icons and buttons appear on the course page. Each of the sections has an Add an Activity or Resource button. Selecting the button will pull up the Activity Chooser, which lets you select which activity or resource you want to add. Selecting an Activity or Resource will show you a brief description of what the activity is along the right side. Once you know which activity or resource you want to add, choose it and select Add at the bottom. Note that every activity or resource on your course page has its own edit menu. The edit menu lets you select and edit certain settings for that particular activity. For example, if I wanted to edit the settings for paper one, I select edit and then edit settings. The edit menu also lets me indent activities. By selecting move right, I can indent paper one to the right. The edit menu also lets me hide or show an activity. If I wanted to hide paper one, select edit, then hide. Note that the link to paper one has become gray and a message says hidden from students. The link is visible to me because I am an instructor in this course. To students, this link would not be visible. If I wanted to show paper one from its edit menu, select show. Note that the link becomes blue and that the hidden from students message goes away. Links that are blue are visible to students. Finally, note that the course is not currently available to students. This is indicated by this message at the top and the fact that the link is gray. Students cannot access the course until I click on the Make Course Available button. Once I click on the button, you'll note that the message goes away and that the link to the course is now listed in blue. For more information on iLearn or any other topic, please visit the support documents website at athelp.sfsu.edu.